Welcome back to the Flow Track Podcast. I'm Kevin. He's Lincoln. That's right. He's Lincoln. Second episode in a row. Lincoln Strike joins me. Good morning. How are you, sir? Uh, you know, doing pretty good. Um, I don't know who decided whenever it's you on the show, you always do the intro. But if it's me and Gordon, Ooh. I do the intro. I guess we've just completely kept Gordon away from doing the introductions. We're a little scared mm -hmm. what, what he would come out of his mouth if if <clears throat> if he were left to that. And I guess now, after mm -hmm. the Sixers have been swept, we've got to keep his mouth closed as much as possible because I, who knows, expletives might fly out. He's, he's running hot uh, uh, right now. Mm -hmm. I feel bad for him. I know he struggles when his Philly sports teams don't do good. Um, but... Uh, uh, we could have a whole podcast. And I'm just going down a rabbit hole about the the process. Did the it was the process a failure? Because I think this could be the end of the process. I like how they're just going to give up on it now because they got swept. Yeah. It didn't matter that their second best player was hurt. They're not going to let cool mm -hmm. heads prevail and be like, you know what? This was a weird season. There was a global mm -hmm. pandemic. One of our best players got hurt. Let's just run it back next year. It's like, nope. Got to get rid of all mm -hmm. of it. Let's just scrap. Let's yeah. build it back up. They sell hope there. That's what they do. They just sell yeah. hope. And I think people, Philly sports fans, I'm not saying Gordon specifically. Oh, wait, maybe I am. Yes, I'm talking about Gordon specifically. They're, I, a lot of times they're more interested in the trend. They're more interested in the transactions, in the moves, in the actual yeah. team. If you told them they could go farther next year but not make as many moves, I think they are really into the whole, the whole free agency game and cap room and all that stuff. It's wild. It gets very excited about – small free agent additions it's uh <laughs> it's counterintuitive you would think um but uh i enjoy i i listen i don't want to try to enjoy too much with for somebody who i consider my friend but you know he's trolled us over our sports fandom before and i'm not going to send him yeah. text messages after his, his team gets swept but uh, just because I think we you know we're familiar enough with each other, we know now that it's just mm -hmm. that the uh, here's the thing. Last year was the ultimate. the The Kawhi bounce around game winner was the ultimate, yeah. and we were in Iowa watching it, and we could hear Gordon's death screams all the way back in Texas. <laughs> so it's never going to top that. Um, but, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I tend to get a certain kick out of just the the pain that is other people's sports fandoms because i you know as a chicago fan i've felt that pain many times over and i'll feel it again so sure all's well that sure. uh it's, it's all, i guess all's fair and love and war that doesn't really apply here but kind of does yeah 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 i mean i think people want to know why are we not going to hear gordon on the pod this week and you've just given a great explanation we have no idea where he is <laughs> usually he sends that usually he sends a text out on and we have a lot of Gordon stands who listen to this episode so that's why why I'm mm -hmm. saying it usually he sends out a text on Sunday night hey who's on the pod this week and I was gonna do a yeah. joke where it's just gonna be you it's gonna be it was gonna be you every day because yeah you, you haven't been yeah. here for a while and I know you're still looking for that time off from Doha that's not coming uh, exactly yeah but <laughs> but he never he never sent the text and I thought well that's weird yeah. why you actually sent the text mm -hmm. before he did and mm -hmm. he didn't say anything. And then I realized, oh, he's probably wandering around downtown Austin and has been there for the last eight hours. So now I'm kind of worried yeah. now that we say it. Yeah. So we should reach out after this episode. I guess we have a meeting at, we'll in, sure. in, in a few. Yeah, we can mm -hmm. touch base with him. But yeah, we'll make sure he's doing okay. Let's, let's talk. Did you, watch, did you watch Stockholm Live yesterday? Did you watch it taped? Did you watch it um, in all its glory? Yeah, I mean, I've, watched, I've since watched all the races. I... Uh, was sleeping in because the not last night but the night before was a little rough with my three week old daughter uh not too bad but just this the the you know the waking up at four and just being totally awake at four o'clock the tough one the tough one to navigate so i was asleep until like 9 30 so i missed i woke up to your text message not woke up too but when i woke up it was like you had texted me five minutes ago reacting to war homes uh 4687 and uh, truth be told, I know he is. It's he's capable of a special time anywhere um, at any time. I I didn't think like the Stockholm track historically has not been super fast, and it kind of bared out mm. in the other <clears throat> events. But I didn't think like the world record was under threat yesterday. And to to my surprise, obviously he he 
he nearly did it right and he you know some people would say that you know him uh grazing the the last hurdle cost him the world record and so that's how close he came to it so i was stunned that that he ran that fast even though we expect a you know a remarkable performance every time war home uh competes yeah yeah exactly i think he would have had it just 0.09 from kevin young's mark he went out in lane eight which was a clear sign that he had no interest of using the competition in any way shape or form yeah. which i'm glad yeah. he has realized that because we've all noticed that over the past year or so unless he's in a race with samba or benjamin what's what's remarkable is you know there's events that have gone on as per usual throughout the pandemic despite the pandemic like the men's 1500 you're getting jakob yeah. and you're getting timothy chariot um toe to toe they're they're battling it out and then there's events such as I don't know, the women's formula hurdles, right? Sydney and Delilah Muhammad didn't go to Europe. So that event is basically on pause for the time being. There's yeah. Nothing's happening yeah. with that. Yeah. You, you, you could say Lyle's in the 200. So they're, they're, you're getting some action there. But usually um, what I've noticed is it's hot or cold, right? Donovan Brazier has decided to run this year and has yeah. had some awesome races. And there's been some big time people who have stepped up and tried to compete against him, where, be it in Monaco or Stockholm. Warholm hasn't had anybody step up with him, but it doesn't matter because he can carry the yeah. whole thing by himself. He's never needed competition to run fast. He still doesn't need competition to run fast. This was just a remarkable run. He came back later in the meet, ran 45 low to win the Open 400. I think I think he's going to get the record, Lincoln. I just the timing this year is so weird. I saw the next target would be in the Italy Diamond League, but that's that's three weeks away. No guarantees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know he said in Monaco, I'm going to run this like it's the last race of the season. So now you know, we'll be five weeks past what was supposed to be the last race of his season. Do you see, is there any possibility that we go into 2021 without Warholm being the world record holder? Well, I think it's, it's certainly possible. As you, you know, he, he ran a perfect race through <clears throat> whatever it was, nine hurdles, and then, you know, he barely grazed it. And it made, like we said, it probably cost him. Although he didn't stumble, but it, it did, you know, it was slight enough, or it was a significant enough for it to probably, I mean, 0.09 is not a very <clears throat> big amount of time. Do I, is there any possibility? Sure. I mean, I, 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 you know, he only has a handful more of chances. It's tough to run that fast. You know, he's not as good as he is. He's not breaking 47 seconds every single time out, right? Um, given what we saw yesterday, I'm kind of surprised he didn't run faster than 47.10 in Monaco. Um, so, it, I mean, it's just regardless of somebody who's in world record shape, like I think he is, it's hard to break 47 seconds every single time out. And even for – a self-motivated guy, a guy who doesn't rely on a competition, like you said, it's, uh, you know, doing it all on your own, I think is particularly hard. He would benefit f from a Benjamin or a Samba, um, even if those guys aren't ready to run <clears throat> sub 47 right now. So given that he's going to have probably a handful more, you know, two to three, maybe four more chances, I don't know which races he's going to do. Um, it, it's not a guarantee that, uh, he's going to have the world record. I imagine he will. I, I would <clears throat> venture to guess that he will have it by the end of this season. But uh, it's a hard, it's a tough record, even for someone on, on his level. And he's going to have to be perfect. And he was almost perfect yesterday, but just, just a, a hair imperfect enough to where Kevin Young is still drinking mojitos mm -hmm. out on the, the supposed beach where he lives. I have no idea what he's doing, but uh yeah it's a tough record and he's he's got to be perfect and most races he's pretty close to perfect and yesterday was as close as he's ever come and uh i think i think hitting the hurdle really emphasized like oh yeah he's got to be a hundred percent on to to get this it's not just going to come by him like you know he's not just going to start running in the 46 sixes like he's going to have to have a perfect race and uh he almost had it yesterday isn't it weird though that Doha World Championship in front of a a crowd yeah. with the best competition. Instinctively a crowd, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Samba was racing, so there was people there. there yeah, right? you're right. Okay, yeah, there, yeah, there, right. there was more people there, and it was a major championship. There was a, something on the line, and he runs 47-4. And then now in this race, yeah, there's, no, there's nobody within three seconds of him. There's no crowd. 
There's no global championship. It's only a second real formula hurdle race of the year. And he runs the fastest time he's ever put in. I just think, as we talked about, I think we talked about this last week. Oh, wait, that podcast never saw the light of day. In any event, let me just recap yeah. what we talked about in the podcast. It didn't. <laughs> but we were talking about we were talking about how correct me if I'm wrong, we were talking about how we need to kind of revisit the assumption that every athlete needs a bunch of races to get sharp at this level. That for yeah. some people, i.e. Timothy Cherry, who almost runs a PR in Monaco, it's not a it's not a one to one comparison. It's not as if, oh, everybody on their third race is obviously going to be better than their first race. Maybe Warholm is just that guy. He doesn't need competition. He doesn't need a crowd. He just slaps himself hard enough until he gets fired up. He doesn't need a lot of races to get going at a high, at a high level. Because if he does need those things, Lincoln, he's going to run forty six two or something like that. Crazy yeah, when he yeah, does yeah. when he does break yeah. it. Because he's yeah. not getting any of that, and he's still running so fast. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, he is has a, I think a tremendous advantage. We kind of thought that this would be a three-way battle for the world record. He's at a tremendous advantage because, like you said, he's not going to need those things. So he's going to he's he's in th- uh, he is um, a threat to break the world record every time he goes out. I don't think you can probably say say the same um, about Benjamin and Samba. That they're, they're going to need to to my eyes, and I could be wrong, but they're going to need a big final to to do it. Not only because they don't race as frequently. But they just don't. They 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 tend to build, right? It seems like it's a it's a build, especially for for Benjamin. It seems like he's a you know you think back, he built up to his NCAA final uh, and and ran that forty seven zero, and it will operate that way. It is almost like he's more comfortable in like a time trial type situation where it's just him. Mm-hmm. He's facing himself. His best competitor is truly himself. It's like you know he's got a like a in his mind, he's just trying to prove it to himself that he can do this all alone. And uh, it's a tremendous advantage when you c- come to this era, who's going to be the king of this era. I think we've, you know, talked about like who's these, these three are all going to be all uh, potentially three all time grades. I mean, Warholm already is that. And his ability to, to just be like a self starter is s- seemingly different. Yes. I know Samba is much more reserved and so is Benjamin. So it's, you know, you're not going to see them, slapping their face but he just has an i think i think a, a physical or a mental edge just because he's so he just seems like he wants it more and that may not be the case but but he's just in a zone right now that nobody else is getting to and he just has this like psychological edge as far as um yeah this is huge for him going into next year right it's, you're gonna be talking about a guy who is trying to crack a world record every time out while Benjamin wasn't even racing. Um, he doesn't seem beatable right now. And it's just getting him the world record. Um, and, and he's going to be able yeah. to do it seemingly by himself. We haven't heard much from Samba this year, but Benjamin has been, I mean, he ran that 10 0 in that that's hundred, right. yeah. which, which is useful yeah. to have. That's, that's a useful tool. If you're going to try to beat Carson Warholm, cause obviously he's got the, got the flat speed. I don't, yeah, I don't know if, I don't know if he wants it more. I would say more. He's just his skill set is definitely more useful given the current predicament, and he's able to take advantage mm-hmm. of it. Also, him being in Europe is a big help right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. If if of this course. if this circuit was happening in the U.S., if the Diamond League had most of its meets in the U.S., maybe we would see Benjamin running. Um, don't I don't, you I'm think, not sure. I, I imagine Warholm would be here, right? If it was, he, he likes to race. Like, so he, he, would, yeah. he would be racing. Um, he'd, he'd find I, his he way. Find he'd, a way. If it was on the, you know, if it was <clears throat> anywhere, I think he's, he's showing up to, to do things, but obviously being Norwegian and, you know, being in Stockholm and then going to Monaco, like it's, it's, it's easy for him. So he has a distinct advantage. Yeah. Maybe it's not. Uh, just because of the fact that he's screaming at himself and whacking himself in the face and, and, and well, the fact that he's doubling in a meet where he nearly broke the world record doesn't necessarily mean he wants it more. I guess that's, that's, uh, that's, that doesn't bear out, but gosh, this guy's eager, right? He's, I mean, like, well, who, yes, who else he, doubles? Who else doubles? It's not like Chepta guy was going to come back after the 5k and like, well, let me hop in that 1500. I'm ready to go. Like, who else does that? Yeah. yeah. He, he's trying to capture the moment and he's doing 
what we were imploring other athletes to do earlier this year who had huge breakthroughs and huge PRs. I think yeah. that is what is separating him a bit, not just in his own event group, but from other athletes in general. I think he and his coach appreciate the fact that there is nothing guaranteed. There's nothing that's saying next year he's going to be better than this year. There's nothing that says when he gets in a race with Samba and Benjamin that they're going to run that fast, and he's going to necessarily be the one to get the world record. So he's going to take shots at it. He's yeah. trained his life for this moment. Did it come in an awkward year when there's no fans in the stands and competition is lower? Yeah, it did. But I think they're also thinking this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Let's go now. Let's not wait. 2021 may not be as good to us as prior years. So let's sure. do it. And I think that makes sense from a competitive standpoint. He is young, and you think that he's going to keep coming back and he's going to be able to do this for years and years. But there's no, there's no promise of that. There's no promise mm -hmm. of that. So we're just seeing Warholm just take big swing after big swing after big swing. And it's so far it's – paying off and he's almost getting the ultimate goal there, which would be yeah. this world record. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's, it's tough to even add anything else to it. He's, he's remarkable and uh, he is, you know, we talk about certain athletes saving a season and it's a little, it yeah. has a ten, it's tendency to be a little, uh, I don't know, disingenuous, but He's added along with Chep the guy. He, he's he's put a big charge into the season, not being entirely lost. Along with Mondo Duplantis and other and other athletes, um, it's it's great. And I say this knowing that this comes off as an old man take, but it, it has been great for the sport for him to be doing what he's done so far this year. And it was, I mean, good on him for doubling. When, like I said, you don't ever see that. I mean, a world class athlete doubling in a in a nothing yeah. meet. He wanted to come back. I mean good for the entertainment value is is this is cool this is i don't want to take this for granted because you know you have you yeah. realize you don't see this very often where somebody's a threat to break the world record every single time out and that's their expressed goal and you know it's not a well we'll see what's going to come i have no mm -hmm. idea what i'm going to run it's no i'm trying to break the world record every single time i come out uh that just doesn't that just doesn't happen very very often and uh <laughs> it's 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 more than we could have asked for in a, in a lost season. It's pretty incredible. He's not overthinking it is mm -hmm. what you're saying. Basically he's not overthinking it. He's saying I'm going to enter my best event and I'm going to run it as fast as I can every single time. There will be no yeah. games. There'll be no tricks. I might double, but I'm going to run my premier event first. And then I'm going to yeah. run a second event just to show you how good I am. But this is it. This is what I'm going to do. There's not going to be any, any dodging my event there's not going to be any gimmicks i'm just going to go straight at it as hard as i can every yeah. single time and well and you're going right forward, I, I see why that has appeal yeah going forward if i can give him any advice i mean just make sure to start a little bit quicker i don't think his start has been <laughs> fast enough so I'm just kidding. uh no i to, to answer your question a long-winded way i i think he has the world record i by the end of this year that's not an, a hard take but but um Gosh, if he doesn't, it's just going to be like it's it's you feel you're going to feel bad for him just because he's come so close now and he's he's approaching the season with reckless abandon, so he deserves to have it. But uh, it's uh, some parts of me want him to do it, and then some parts of me want him to do it in like the Tokyo final, where it's just going to yeah, be a ridiculously no. fast race where you know they could I, I, it won't the record won't last until the Tokyo final next summer, but it, you know. It, I remember being in Doha and and I uh, you we were sitting next to each other and I thought he broke the record because my brain went to 464 as, as opposed to 474. <laughs> and so I don't know you want that, there's some track and field itch to to want to see fast times all happen in, at the highest level and not at the you know the Stockholm Diamond League with no fans. Um yeah. but that I don't think it's going to last that long. Um <clears throat> But yeah, know, well, especially I, him, there's especially him, right? Thing. If it lasts that long, it's not necessarily a bad thing. He's going to get it eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, especially him, J Jason, and I were talking about this last night on another podcast. I do house of run. I, and I'm with you. I want, I didn't want him to get it. I didn't want him to get it selfishly because I thought this guy deserves the crowd. This guy deserves yeah. the stage. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be done when he's in lane eight 
with nobody in the stands except cardboard cutouts yeah. in a in in on on a Sunday morning, uh, yeah. well, U.S. time. I guess Sunday yeah. Sunday afternoon Stockholm time. That's just it's not befitting who he mm-hmm. is as a racer, yeah. and it's not befitting a major major world record. But yeah. I don't think he cares about that. Clearly, he's yeah. wired differently. He's just gonna go for it. Um, yeah, Brazier, ten in a row in the eight hundred. Who saw yeah, this, this coming? Was, yeah, just kidding. <laughs> Uh, this one was bumpy. I felt like it was a kind of a like Monaco felt like a weird race, and then this one was even a little stranger. He never looked entirely comfortable. I think two hundred meters to go, he was kind of boxed in. Uh, but then his last hundred, as usual, was just incredibly elite and blew everyone's doors off. Um, I know they. It's been reported. I guess he's dealing with a little foot issue, which it's always interesting because with track athletes, typically. If you know they're dealing with something, they're going to try to not race. And you would think, oh, it's an injury type thing in a in a lost year. You would think, oh, shut it down. So I, it's hard to know the severity of it. Obviously, he's still winning, but it is nice, you know, as he progresses as an athlete to see him win, even when things aren't exactly you know going to plan. It seems like he's much to, to my eye. He's much better suited, and everyone is to an eight man race in the, in the 800, this, this pacer thing on, on the, when people starting in the same lane, I think it's kind of tricky. And you got Marco a in front of you. You're trying to navigate that. It's, I think it's a little complicated for the 800. Um, he's figuring out obviously how to do it. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's going to be an American record this season. I could end up eating my words, but it, it's like I said, it's good for him to figure out different ways to win as opposed to just blowing everyone doors off from 300, uh, 300 or 400. Yeah. I, I looked at this race differently than you. I, it looked like he knew exactly what he was doing. And within about 150 meters, I, well, I saw him settle into the back of the pack, and I thought this is going to be the the Diamond League final race plan. This is not going to be the no. Doha mm-hmm. World Championship race plan okay. of, hey, I'm not going to go for the world record. I'm just going to try to work on my clothes here, and I'm going to sit and yeah. sit and sit, and then when it's time to go, I'm going to go. He looked like he was, to me, in control the entire time, but was not really interested in chasing a fast time. And I think part of that sure. is, and and this is me just speculating, did not talk to him, about it. But if he were to come back on our podcast, I would say this to him and he would probably agree with me. I think mm-hmm. he already has the American record. He already has the mm-hmm. American record. If he, were, if he goes out and runs 142.2 or 142.1, are we thinking about Donovan Brazier differently, drastically differently? No, he gets his PR a couple ticks faster. But until he's ready to really leap into those 141s, then I think everything, every improvement is just icing on the cake at this point. And I think they wanted it was his third race in a week. And I think they had more to gain by Mm -hmm. thinking, okay, let's, let's just run this thing tactically move on. I think this was the last race of the year. I'm not a hundred percent on that, but I I feel like they said that that I I thought I read that maybe he's going to do one other one. I could, I could be wrong. Um, But I think he just looked at the, okay. Yeah. I stand corrected. I stand corrected, but I think he just looked at the landscape and said, and looked at the race and said, this is how I'm going to run it. Um, cause he seemed to be in, in the spot that he wanted to be in. Look, okay. if Donovan, here's, here's my, here's my prior. If Donovan Brazier is behind 200 meters into a race and an 800, it's because he wants to be behind. It's not because the okay. pace is going too fast. So like, yeah, if he wants, not. if he wants to get behind the rabbit, he can, nobody has the top end speed that Brazier does. If he had a foot problem mm-hmm. or not, I don't doesn't matter. He's still just so much faster than everybody else. Top end in in, mm-hmm. in that race. I'm curious because I got a I, I over the weekend I uh, got a splinter in my foot, and so mm-hmm. and it's been kind of <laughs> tender. I'm what, like, is my foot more sore than Donovan Brazier's right now? Are we on the same level? I'm just trying to figure out because I don't think I'm at my peak right now. Like I think I could still, if I needed to, you know, run a race, like try to break six minutes in the mile or whatever. But like. If people ask me post race how it's training been going, I'd be like, "Well, stepped on a splinter the other day. My foot's a little tender, of- so like, they'd be like, okay, Shrike, say- you're obviously not, you're not ready to go for the world record right now, but you're you're still able to win the the local Taylor community uh, over thirty and over mile." And I'd be like, "Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm doing okay." So I think we're on the same. We're on the, I, I I feel his pain basically. Podcasters, they're just like us. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. That's my take. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. The, the one thing I, I think back to of our podcast is with him was, you know, talking about what does it take to get to that next level? And I know we were talking about Rudisha and kind of prodding him to talk about when are you going to run 140, Donovan? You know, the, the classic thing. Uh, you know, he spoke about, <laughs> well, to get to that next level, you've got to every race – Rudisha dominated every every race and yeah. and and every uh, everyone knew he was going to do that every time out and and um maybe that's the same right now with Brazier but the, ye- yesterday's performance was like I don't know if Wesley Vasquez didn't like it blocked him a little bit better with 100 meters to go I mean Brazier was would have had to go all the way around him it seems like there were some tactical errors to my eye we all know I'm an expert on t- uh, 800 meter tactics <laughs> yeah we would have <laughs> uh, teach an online course. Uh, <laughs> the, the great courses just, with Lincoln Truck. It, it just felt like, you know, that if he's trying to be Rudisha like, that one wasn't very Rudisha like. I like my Brit. No, you know, I, I like this. I like his off races to be in the low 143s. I don't want any of this. He was getting a little too close to 144 for my liking. <laughs> I think that's the goal to get to the Rudisha level, but he can't yeah, yeah. just, me- he can't snap his fingers and get to that level now. I think that's yeah. a. A 2021 thing, and he's mm-hmm. he still dominated the race. I I think he still dominated the race. when mm-hmm. when he's just looming there with 100 to go, and he kicks past you. You know what it reminded me of later on when mm-hmm. I saw that Sunset Tour race with Sinclair Johnson, and she was just chilling the the entire time, and then she kicked the last hundred. You know that mm-hmm. the final margin is going to look the final margin is going to look close for both those athletes. Yeah. But th- that race, and it was close with 100 meters to go, but yeah, the race wasn't actually close. Brazier's yeah, run no, was not actually he was. I mean, he That's put – what was what was the margin there But at the at I the, think at it was finish. almost a second. I mean, to be honest, it was almost a second, I think. Like, it it, it, it ballooned. It yes, ballooned pretty it was, high. Yes. 0. 0.89, 0. 0.89 seconds to Marco Arop. I mean, yeah, that's a lot in 100. Mm-hmm. That's a lot, right? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Other highlights, Laura Mir ran 357. Jim Mariki ran 159. She beat Raven Rogers, who ran – 201 but i still think that was probably Ra- raven rogers best effort of the of the weird year here um yeah. and then uh, chariot v chariot we got chariot v ingebrigtsen in the 1500 which i'm sure you'd like to talk about uh, chariot was incredibly impressive yesterday i mean the pacing again is is nuts i i think the guy could go out in 145 and still find a way to not fall apart I mean, he's not he's not in world record shape or anything like that but he can go out as fast as possible. Like, you know, they go out in 150 yesterday, and he obviously is going to have a gap. And it was, you know, that was the pacer. So he's probably 151. Um, and I think he called for or won it at 149 opening. I mean, he just, like, he weathers going out hard so well. And it, it doesn't – he's no worse for the wear. And uh, I kind of thought Ingebrigtsen would give him a little bit better of a challenge. I mean, we know at this point Ingebrigtsen's consistent enough to where at worst he's going to get second. But – he, he just – Chariot has this gap at, at the front, and it, it just doesn't he, – he, he never gets passed. Like, Ingebrigtsen, for as close as he's gotten to him, as close as he got at Monaco, he can't get past Timothy Chariot. And that's – it's refreshing to see because what we're used to seeing in the 1500 prior to this Chariot era is, you know, oh, it's a kick for the finish, and, you know, the, the best guy will come later. You know, he'll finish well. No, Chariot just goes to the front and says, try to pass me. And it's every single mm-hmm. time. And it's very impressive. Even if it's monotonous, I know you've been critical of the, the 1500 in the past. You have to appreciate how um, the way he runs is, is I mean, it's it, as for as entertaining as when Kiprop was at his peak and, you know, he was coming from 12th to 1st or whatever it was or, yeah, yeah. you know, what, what, whatever, you know, go, go back to, to previous eras. Um, this is – this, this is, is a, my, he's a gym. My... He's a gym class mile runner. That's what Timothy yeah. Cherry is. He's the world's best gym class mile runner. Which is, I'm going to sprint out because yeah. I don't have any sense of pace. I'm going to yeah. keep cruising along, and then when someone gets on my shoulder, I'm just going to stand front, stand front, stand front, stand front. I'm never going to yeah. relinquish the lead. Mm-hmm. He seems he's a nerd. It seems from typical fatigue patterns that most athletes. Yeah would exhibit and most people mm-hmm. once it starts going bad it gets really bad with jerry he's slowing down but he's always keeping something in the tanks so that way he can just yeah jet jet away and when he needs to to be, 
to be clear, the last hundred yesterday, he looked pretty fried. I mean, his form was breaking down, but still, yet yeah, Ingebrigtsen couldn't keep up. And I, you know, I, I think yep. Ingebrigtsen's running a great race plan. He's running within himself, and when it when it's going out in fifty four flat, he is staying back and saying, "I'm going to run fifty five mid." And yeah. it's I don't think he's being overly cautious. Um, it, eventually, at some point, I'm sure whether it'll be in a, at an Olympics or some time, like you know, he'll he'll beat chariot i don't think chariot at this point is unbeatable um but chariot is certainly resilient and even when you think he's oh he's starting to feel this which you know you saw felt that in monaco and you know he a crack opened yesterday when they only ran i think 58 seconds for the third lap still yet yeah. still yet he he's he's hanging on and 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 it's it's a uh, it's pretty impressive. Even when the time's like 3.30 and you're like, this is another lame 3.30. Um, <laughs> no, it's lame. He, he made it entertaining. I mean, the splits are not what you want, but when you win every time, yeah, what, whatever. Yeah. It, it worked. Yeah. No, he's, I mean, he's, he's great. And I think, I think you and Gordon think he's going to lose earlier than I think he's going to lose. I, I mm -hmm. think he is just, he's running to the level of his, competition right now and mm -hmm. i think in a full seat i think he would be someone who would benefit from more of a lead up i mean we know what Lil britson was doing earlier in the year because he was running road 5ks and he was running really mm -hmm. fast mm -hmm. we didn't know much about what chariot was doing and how he was approaching the season other than he was in the uh world's most uh unfortunate to remote 2k of all time <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. With the with the altitude and the wind and the wet there in mm -hmm. in Kenya competing against the um Ingebrigtsens over in in Oslo. I yeah. think yes, he he came out of the gate hard and uh, you know almost ran that almost ran a PR in in Monaco, but I I I think he can break the world record. Again, I I think that is definitely in play um mm. next year. Interesting. Yeah, I think I yeah. think it's a matter of time. I think that one is I mean, if you asked me at the beginning of the year which one's going to last longer, the 5K world record or the 1500 world record, I would have said 5K will last longer. So, don't actually believe yeah. anything I'm saying with any sort of confidence. And then I'll say that mm -hmm. again about the I'll say it again about the the 5K, or sorry, I'll say it again about the 1500 versus the 800, which I don't think is an outlandish take. I think that it's going to last. The 800 is much more secure. Than the fifteen hundred, I think Chariot is going to get it at some point. Maybe Monaco next year. I, just not having seen him run three below three twenty eight. I don't. I mean, three twenty six flat is really fast. I mean, yeah, he he definitely goes out aggressively. He seems like he has the intent to break it every time. You know, let's just go out at one forty nine, one fifty. But I hadn't even really thought about it too much. Um, but as consistent as he is, you you, you would think that that it could that i don't know it could happen anytime you're right the 5k does kind of change the the thinking of it because i i thought of that not as an unbreakable record but i didn't really i mean if if chef the guy hadn't said i'm going for the world record i would have thought no there's no one on currently in the world that can run faster than 1237 um and so cherry is clearly more you know 326 was within range for him but um it's he's 24 that's, that's, yeah that's tough that's 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 yeah you would think he's going to be able to figure that out at some point but but 326 flat is 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 very difficult i think he's satisfied though whipping uh ingerbritson's butt every single time every single time out though uh you know everyone likes to you know oh Jakob ingerbritson so good for 19 and then chariot's like yeah you know i beat him every single time i'm only four years older too um yeah yeah so, yeah I, <laughs> let's not let's not underappreciate how good he is uh there's a lot of good athletes right now but uh uh like like i said the impressive I, it's very impressive to see somebody who is able to just go out way too hard like you said he's the gym <laughs> class guy he's like the guy in, in you know, watch Jimmy from J from the JV team. He's gonna run. He's gonna run a mile. He's gonna go out in two oh two and end up running four forty five. Like that's what he does. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He doesn't die. Like he doesn't. He can go out in one yeah. one forty nine and be fine. Like he's not gonna. Right. Uh, he's not just gonna completely fall apart. It's very impressive. Most people don't do that, and that is why he's continuing to beat Ingebrigtsen because Ingebrigtsen can't go out that hard 
without risking his entire race. And I, that's a distinct advantage that Chariot has right now. Well, credit to him. I think we underrate Ingerbritsen's tactics too for being that poised. Mm-hmm. In the Monaco race, he didn't get a rabbit. He was the rabbit for that second group, and he still mm-hmm. ran ran three twenty eight. So I'm both both of them. I think can up their up their game, right? I I think there's room for yeah. improvement on, on I don't both know. I don't sides. Think a nineteen year old can get better at this point. I think this is it, right? <laughs> well, I like how you said the three twenty six Hichimaguru's record is a is a tough ask, you know. As if those other easy world records that are lingering out there. Which ones are easy, Lincoln? Which ones are the easy world records? That's good. Yeah, there's a couple race walk ones that I men, men, thought 10K. of. 10K. Uh, no, there's no easy world record. Yeah, yeah. No, there's no – it's – there's there's no there's no real easy ones. You're right. Yeah. Well, I, I think he'll be able to have that drop, though. I think it'll be a situation where he'll PR by mm-hmm. – a second and a half. He'll get that perfect day in in Monaco or somewhere else. And you gotta because run 325, he's willing to though. Let's remember, you got to run 325 to get a world record. That's uh, that's pretty yeah. tough. No, it is fast. It is extremely fast. Um, I wonder if he'll go out. Well, the mile and the the mile and the 15 are pretty well aligned with 343 and 326. I was For wondering if reason, one was. Right, right. I mean, because miles are so infrequently run relative to 1500, 343 seems harder they're probably like you said right around the same thing yeah. the the idea of running a 343 mile or 342 mile whatever it would take is is it's harder to get, wrap my mind around well because you have the american centric viewpoint about the sub four mm-hmm. and someone mm-hmm. could run someone could break four and be 100 meters behind more than 100 meters <laughs> like timothy hishimel garouge would could cross the finish line and then someone who could run 359 would be all about to enter the home stretch. They would yeah. get the sympathy clap, essentially. That's how fast yeah. it is. I'm with you. Yeah. It does sound faster. It's crazy. Yeah. Before we go, yeah. uh, Sunset mm-hmm. Tour, uh, you stayed up to watch it. I know you did. I think we all did. Absorb. Yeah, I did too. I did too. Yeah. Uh, what'd you think? I thought Corey McGee was the story of the, the meet. What about you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that was a. Uh... <laughs> Corey McGee ran too flat. That race didn't have a pacer. I mean, Brendan Martinez went out and took the pace, and it was fast opening lap. I think they were like 58. So it was aggressive. Mm-hmm. Corey McGee is someone who is on the fringes of – you don't really think of her as a legitimate contender to make a team. I know she made a team, I think, come at, like way back in the day, I think 2000, uh, 2013. That, that was obviously before the Shelby Houlihan era. Um you don't think of her as someone who's a major player, but she's had a really strong last two years. And I think last year at USA, she got like DQ'd or something. So who knows before the final, so who knows what she would have done in the final. Um, but running too flat and then, you know, running, I think a 403 PB, you, you got to really seriously con- consider her as a, as an Olympic team contender. Um, you, it's hard because you, you look at Shelby Houlihan and then you look at, uh, Jenny Simpson, they're locked in, and then you know there's one spot between anybody between Kate Grace, Nikki Hiltz, uh, Sinclair Johnson, uh, maybe a couple others. But who of those vying for that third spot next year? Who's had the best season? It's certainly been Corey McGee, uh, and two flat is a mighty impressive time. And so was it for you know Emma Coburn to run two hundred one, and you know. I think Rebecca Mayra ran faster and ran 201 as well. I mean, it was a very impressive 800 for no no pacers. And, you know, we got excited when Shelby last summer ran 159, and here's another competitor running running too flat and maybe would have been faster if if having the pacer. Yeah, it's been a quietly very strong season for for Corey McGee and uh, is showing herself, like I said, to be a, a strong contender for one of the hardest teams to make in the U.S., do you think she has a better chance in the 800? Mm, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Um, no, because you're going to have to run one. If everyone's firing on all cylinders, you're going to have to run 158, 157. I mean, no, she's not going to do that anytime soon. 157? Come on, come on. You're not going to have to well, run, they had to run one, They had to run 158 last year to make it. You had to run, I mean, everybody ran 158. Uh, I mean, okay, yeah. so you well, you, you last year like, was uh, weird though. Okay. People didn't even have the standards last year. That was weird. Okay, was but weird. I mean, Ajay. Uh, so I mean, Ajay's capable of running one fifty seven any given time out. Raven Rogers beat her mm-hmm. last year, and then uh, my my mind's slipping on the 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 
OTC Hannah league Green. who got yeah Hannah Green. Uh, you know she won a diamond league last year. Like you, you may have to run 158 after three rounds, and I, I mean that's not something I don't think McGee can do. I did not look at this through the through the lens of does she need to switch events? Did you look at it like that? Yeah, I'm the event switch advocate. That's mm-hmm. if I was hired in the track and field, I'm actually available for consulting. If mm-hmm. my first rule, avoid Safan Hassan. Second <laughs> rule, during peak Rudisha, avoid David Rudisha. Uh, yeah. Mo Farah called me the other day. He said, should I still do the marathon? I said, no, there's this guy called Elliot Kipchoge. Yeah. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Get away from him. Yeah. Well, in both events, you have two people that you really feel strongly about making a team. You feel strongly about Houlihan and Simpson making the 1500 yeah. and you feel strongly about Wilson and Rogers making the 800. Then you go to that third, that third spot. Um, I mean, Perrier is right there. It's going to be tough to get past her, past Hiltz, past Johnson in the 800. There's a, there's a group there. I, th- if both races were run in similar fashions, i.e. if the 1500 wasn't a wonky tactical affair yeah. i i i could almost see a, a s- smoother path in the 800 but because the 1500 is going to be weird that speed is just gonna be really helpful uh so yeah. I, I, she should do both she should enter in both is oh. is, is the oh. end. yeah wow i didn't see I, you're you're just throwing curveballs at me the entire time uh why wouldn't you enter both why wouldn't you enter well, both what, what's, what's the point of not entering both it's the first first half, second half, right? Fifteens in the beginning, five Ks in the end, first four days. Yeah, I guess. You're, or sorry, yeah. fifteen and eight. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. You definitely would enter both. I guess that's a that's a good point. Okay, yeah. I okay, mean, you you wrote you the do. headline. You wrote the headline on the site. She runs the fastest oh. eight hundred by an American this year. I mean, I, you had outdoor. to have been yeah. out. So. Yes. Yeah. You had to feel yeah, you're some right. sort of way about it. There's a little thing called clickbait, Kevin. I don't know if you've heard of it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's it. I don't know if that's the the key clickbait. It was just a, it was an interesting yeah. observation. I would not have thought to look that up, but that is significant. I mean, she yeah. almost broke one. She almost ran one fifty nine in a race with no pacer. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. No, she's definitely one going to run. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, run fifteen hundred, and then obviously just why not throw it all out there in the eight hundred if if possible. Yeah. You know, when I wrote the preview for the event, I was surprised to see her PB was two hundred one. I probably wasn't even going to mention her as much as I did, and I look up her, her personal best. I was like, wow, two hundred one. I didn't even know it was that strong. So she's got that that kind of the speed there naturally, and then you would think she can go a little bit faster. So that's the argument for maybe the 800 could be a better event. And maybe you look at it now that you ran too flat. That said, the 800, I don't know. You can kind of... Uh, uh, it's it's second. You'd, you'd obviously do it just for a chance to qualify. There's there's tricky. no reason why you would not... Coburn ran 201. No one's going to say, though, Emma Coburn, you should try the 800 as well, right? And she was just a little well, bit let me off. Let me look. Let me look at the schedule. Let me see how they the, if they the overlap. Double. Yeah. Well, we're talking about legendary stuff here. That's what yeah. that's they name buildings after you when you do things like that, mm-hmm. Lincoln. Yeah. yeah. There's no the Corey there's, McGee multi purpose center. <laughs> the Emma Coburn steeple and eight hundred yeah. center for human performance. Uh yeah, there's no there's no reason not to do it. There's two days off after I guess the question is, do you try to get the standard? Do you waste energy trying to get the standard early season? And I think she's good enough to obviously get the standard yeah. mm-hmm. with, without trying very hard. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. no benefit. Did you see in the back round of this race, Joe Boshard going nuts? It was, it was a I great, did. great clip. Yeah. He, I, uh, he's like, looking, he's like looking for the sub two, looking for the sub yeah. two. And then he sees that she just missed it. And he's like, ah. Well, and he's trying like to scream as a coach would, but he's like trying to like pulling his mask ahead of, without pulling his mask off his face. He's like pulling it yeah, yeah. in front of his, uh, you know, everyone's, it feels like I'd be interested to see everyone's evolution with masks. Like, you know, I started with like a very surgical, like medical mm-hmm. mask. And then I've gone a little bit more towards like functionality, given how, how much I have to wear a mask when I go out. Um, be curious to see everyone's mask situation. Like, is that the mask he started out with? Did he just wear it the, before the race? And then he realized, oh, I'm not mm-hmm. gonna be able to do my coaching duties because his mask is a little tight. I mean, my yeah. son is kick, kicking my butt right now. He's got a Spider-Man mask. Like, this mm-hmm. is like, are you, are you, 
do you or do you rock a, a cloth mask or a or like a surgical type mask? A uh, cloth one. A cloth yeah, one. Yeah. It's double 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 layered, very smooth. Mine has a it's megaphone a out of it though, so I'll sell them <laughs> to any coaches. It just I can yeah. yell splits very effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, so, before we so yeah. Carlos Villarreal uh, won the men's mile. Mm -hmm. Sinclair Johnson, as we mentioned, won the women's. Uh, 1500 Lauren Paquette and Kellen Taylor went one, two in the women's 5,000. And then Cesarek, yeah. to no one's surprise, won a tactical <laughs> men's 5,000. You're why are you it, laughing? Oh, just uh, yeah, it's it's uh, you would have liked someone else of his ability, obviously, in that race to make it a little quicker. I think the conditions were supposedly a little tough, but I was a little disappointed with the times in both 5000s. Um, I mean, the women's 15-10 is a good mark, and I know there's a number of PBs, but come on, Chez. We can't roll a little bit faster than 13-21. I mean, I I, doesn't, I would have liked to see it. Doesn't every Cheserec race feel like like the Pac-10 championships, Pac-12 championships? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I think he gets in that. Well, he's racing some guys that were, you know, past college stars in the NCAA. Maybe he's just like, well, I know how to beat these guys. We just go slow, and then I'll wind it up, right? <laughs> and, uh yeah. You're just kind of like, all right, Chez, let's let's we're we're not at Oregon anymore. Uh, let's. Uh, I mean, it's not his fault, right? I mean, there was he didn't. It's he's just trying to win. But I don't know. I just wanted I wanted more out of that race. Yeah, Klecker and Hoare both broke thirteen thirty. I think I know you thought Klecker would have a bigger. I think he was bigger I, PR. He had a PR, but I think he was having a pretty off race. It seemed like to I, I think he's significantly better than Ollie Hoare in the five thousand on on a typical day, and he got beat by him. And it was a good race for Hoare, but yeah, I thought Klecker maybe would be a little bit more competitive, and I thought he'd run in the thirteen teens. It wasn't meant to be though. They just were too. It, there's way too many like 66, 67 laps in there, and it just wasn't yeah. consistent. And it could have been owed to the conditions. So, so. maybe next yeah. sunset tour. It's, it's be tough with no. Week. It's tough with no with no pay, pacer and no. Well, wait. They had Kieran, Kieran Leonard was there for a little bit, right? Just but not, few, not long laps. enough for it to be a significant. I mean, you got to go through three K obviously to make it. I feel like you know a chance to run a fast time, and it's just, he wasn't in there for that long. Yeah. Um, good point. Good point. All right, we'll leave it there. Flowcheckpodcast mm -hmm. at gmail dot com. Lincoln will be back by himself tomorrow to do the full hour. He's taking your calls. <laughs> One eight hundred call link. No. Yeah. Call link. Maybe we'll read some emails tomorrow. Maybe we'll read some emails. There you go. By we, I mean whoever is on yeah. the show tomorrow. Anyway, mm -hmm. thanks Alon for producing. Thanks to you, Lincoln, and we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.